fish. Seven fish. Ha, 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 ha. Chip, chip, cheerio. Okay, here we go. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to my kitchen. Today, we are taking a trip across the pond. I'm gonna be showing you a recipe for some gluten-free fish and chips. I've got some cod here, ready to go. We're gonna make a delicious batter. We're gonna twice fry our french fries. I'm so excited. So grab a glass of wine scene and let's get cooking. Now, a traditional fish and chips, I'm just kidding. A traditional fish and chips is normally made in a really glutinous, beer batter. Uh, we're not using gluten or beer in this. I have a few different uh, types of starches and flours that we're gonna use to make a really hearty, uh, really crunchy crust. We're gonna start with one half cup of rice flour. Get that in there. And then we have one fourth cups of both cornstarch and tapioca starch. The combination of all these is just gonna add a really nice light crust. It's gonna be super great. I've got one teaspoon of baking powder. That's gonna help to give a little fluffiness to it. And then we're just gonna add a nice little bit of salt into here. And while I'm here, we're gonna season our fish as well. We wanna make sure our food is nicely seasoned. Nothing too, too complicated here. And now it's time for our wet ingredients. In lieu of a beer or an ale, I've got 3 fourths cup of a club soda or seltzer water. This is going to help to keep our batter, ASMR, to keep our batter nice and light. This is a really fun technique. And I've got just one egg just to help bind everything together. So just like that, it's just about six or seven ingredients. We're going to get this all, I don't want a rubber spatula or a whisk. Let's do a whisk, a rubber spatula whisk. We're just gonna combine everything together, fold all those pieces in, make sure we're nice and homogenous. And the egg helps to give it that signature kind of golden color which normally comes from the ale or the beer in the batter. So I've got all my wet and dry ingredients together. We're gonna let this sit for a few minutes just to get everybody together, let them all know each other a little bit. And while this is going, I'm gonna show you how I prepped my potatoes. To start, I scrubbed clean three russet potatoes, cut them into slabs, and then sliced them into pieces that were about one quarter inch thick. Once they were sliced, I placed them into cold water to help them pull out any residual starch. This step is gonna help them to get extra crispy when we get them in our fryer. So my potatoes have been soaking in this water. Again, we're doing this to help them release any residual starch, that way they get extra crispy. I've got some paper towel here. I wanna try and get these as dry as possible before going in our oil. Water and oil, water and hot oil is, um, a safety hazard so we just want to be extra extra careful trying to get these nice and dry before dropping them in i think i said this earlier we're going to be twice frying these chips here double frying them up the first round is just to get them cooking a little bit then we're going to do our fish and then we're going to finish with a second fry of our chips get them extra extra crispy finish them with some salt they are going to be so good i'm so excited I had fish and chips when I visited London way back when I was 15 with my mom. And it was so delicious. Um, obviously I haven't been able to find a lot of gluten-free versions, so why not make it here at home? It's gonna get a top layer on here, really pat them as dry as possible. Give them a little peek. These look really Really stunning. These cute little wedges. Um, I left the skin on. I love my chips or french fries with skin on. I think it just adds a nice variance of texture and crunch. I've got my Dutch oven already, big blue over here. I've got him preheating with a bunch of corn oil. You can use whatever kind of oil your preference is. The corn oil was on sale, so I grabbed that. We've got our potatoes nice and dry. You're just gonna wanna delicately get these in here in the safest way possible. We're just doing a quick fry here. We're gonna let these go maybe two or three minutes. Maybe I'll use my tongs actually. I don't wanna, don't wanna hurt myself. And if you have to do them in batches, go for it. 
Wow, I'm so excited. I love, 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 love frying things in my Dutch oven. Back in November, I did some nachos. Uh, I crisped up some tortilla chips in here. Just fun to fry things at home. You know, you feel me? You understand what to mean? So excited. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. You wanna make sure you're moderating your heat. If it gets too hot, obviously you'll risk burning them. So just keep an eye on it. This is looking actually really good already. I'm actually gonna pull these first ones out. Remember, we're gonna finish cooking these later, so if they're not done now, they will be later. I just have quite a bit more. I didn't wanna overcrowd my pot too much. But look how gorgeous and golden brown these are. They kind of remind me of the, um, the french fries we would get at the Jersey Shore growing up. Ah, especially with that potato skin still on there. Oh my gosh. Gorgeous. Let's get our next batch in here. Oh my God, they smell so good. They like actually smell like the ones from the Jersey Shore. Or from London. I'm really excited. I'm just really excited about that crunch, that like really crispy outside and the really soft, hot middle. Oh, I just, I just love potatoes. I love french fries, I love potatoes. Okay. Fry one done, time to go back to our fish. All right, it's time to start our dredging process. In this bowl, I'm just gonna add a little bit more cornstarch just to give it a light dry layer. Season this up with a little bit of salt. It's gonna be nicely seasoned all the way through. Give it a little zhuzh, mix it all up. And the process is we're just gonna take our fish Get a nice little coating of our cornstarch. Make sure to shake off any excess. We're gonna go into our batter. And then from there, right into our fryer. Ooh. Look at that. I'm gonna keep doing this process. I'm gonna do three at a time, just so I don't overcrowd my pan. And these are gonna cook for about six to eight minutes total in the fryer. We'll keep an eye, flip them if they don't submerge themselves totally into that batter. Oh, nice and thick too. There you go, see in a little bit? All right, I'm gonna get my, <laughs> my sticky hands clean. <laughs> All right, our fish have been cooking for about six to eight minutes. They are bubbling away. We're gonna pull them out, get them resting on some paper towel to catch any excess oil there. Oh my goodness. Look at that. First. Immediately, immediately hit that with some. Fresh push salt. Okay. Let's get our next batch down. Right. Look how gorgeous and flaky it got in here. You heard that, right? Oh my god. Oh wow. Oh, it's so <laughs> it's so good. Wow, wow. Mmm. Good luck, Kaya.
It's like when they get noisy is they think when it's like almost ready. I feel like they come to like this crescendo of bubbling. I think we're ready to go. Gorgeous. Beautiful. So sad. All right, let's finish our chips. Oh my gosh, the anticipation of this is actually insane. These gorgeous potato wedges. These are teasing me over here. These are gonna cook up really fast. It smells so good. Okay, our twice fry is complete. You know the drill. Carefully pull your items out of the fryer. Oops. I'll rescue him, don't worry. So you're gonna pull this baby. There's your solution now. Pull it closer. Look how gorgeous. You can, you can literally hear how crispy they are. Just from my tongue scraping up against them. Look how gorgeous these are. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Ready, ready. Hmm. Oh my god. Oh god. <laughs> Look at that. This comes together so quickly. You can make fish and chips right in your own home, completely gluten-free. You don't have to go to London. You can do it right in your own home. Thank you so much for joining me as I tried this recipe. It's, it's, it's so good. You just, you have to try it.